Well, my brother ah, and sisters in Christ, welcome back again. That fastest 30 minutes is in effect, and we're continuing the process of teachings of the world. And uh, we found out, and, you know, stopped in, in the book of Luke, uh, talking about the lost son. And for most of you, and for those of you who say, Prophet Johnson, well, where have you been? Is everything okay and everything is all right? Well, you know, we have to make sure that we as a species of human beings do just as our vehicles uh, need uh, to be done as far as tuning up as the mileage and having the oil change and, you know, transmission fluid checked and things like that and making sure your water temperature is right and all that. Well, those are the things that I've had to do just recently here and uh, to make sure that things uh, within my human anatomy of life were in uh, good tuning positioning. Um, but I did have a mechanic. Uh, that was very evil to put a bug in the vehicle and to burn uh, with a fire as the fire of hell. Uh, to this day, I am experiencing that fire, and uh, that's why I do not understand the law and the rule, which is, first of all, to do no evil or no harm to the vehicle that you are preparing. So I will say no more about that, but even in the process of now, it is ongoing, but all is well. So we're going to deal with teachings of the world, and boy, if, <laughs> if there was anyone else that could really, really uh, talk about it uh, or teach it, I, I guess it would be me right about now, would definitely be a good candidate for that. But... We saw that, but we're not going to stay, we're out of Luke, but, you know, we're out of Luke with the lost son in verse number 30 in Luke uh, 15, but as soon as thy son was come, which have devoured thy living with harlots, thou hast killed for him the fatted calf. And he said unto him, son, thou art ever with me, and all that I have is thine. It was meet that we should make merry and be glad. For this thy brother was dead and is alive and was lost and is found. So what, what, what are we having here? What, what are we seeing here? We're seeing that God will allow the world teachings, or the, I, I like to call it the world learnings, or the old folks would say the world will learn you, or life will teach you. So he will allow it to take place in the lives of each and every individual that is in rebellion or disobedient to him. You've got to remember that Wisdom is a defense. Money is a defense. So money is a defense. So what, do, what does money do? Money protects, you see. But once that defense is taken away, then you turn again to the weak and beggarly elements of this world. So we are going to look from the book of Luke to the book of Isaiah. And uh, this is really something because um, we're, we're, we're really going to look in, at what God is saying about who believes. Where is the one that is going through the process of life that really believes what I'm saying. Isaiah 53 and 1, who have believed our report? And to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? 
So when we look back at verse number 13 in Isaiah 52, the suffering servant, as he is called, behold, my servant shall deal prudently. He shall be exalted in extol and be very high. As many were astonished at thee, his visage was so marred more than any man in his form more than the sons of men. What did Jesus do? He went through life to teach love, to teach life. What did they do? They beat him. <clears throat> they beat him unrecognizable. So shall he sprinkle many nations. The kings shall shut their mouths at him. For that which had not been told, them shall they see. And that which they had not heard, shall they consider. So God, as the old saying, what goes around comes around. He's given reference to rest assured those that did the damage eventually are going to pay the price. When we look at life, we look at many parables of it. So Jesus gives us these parables to teach us how to become good stewards of life. But many a times we won't learn until, as the older folks say, it's too late. And that's true. Many of the teachings in life that are experiential based upon the knowledge of experimentationalisming, whatever I tried to say, experimenting it in life, then that individual comes to a place of knowledge and growth. But this happens over time after so many years. You know, it's not like a lot of people are accepting their life for what it is. People would say, well, grow old gracefully. Well, a lot of people don't want to do that. They don't want to be like myself and accept the fact that I'm old. You know, a junior, senior citizen. So they'll go out and put on makeup and bleach and whatever, get their skin changed and all that stuff and Instead of letting their wrinkles grow naturally and their hair grow naturally and looking like, you know, whatever. But don't look like this. Please don't. But so we try to change the dynamics of who we are. And we try to change life. I mean, when you look at the transformation, and the Bible says, be you transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good, acceptable, and perfect will of God. But the transformation in today's time of the mind and the renewing of it is not according to the alignment of God's word, of love. You know what I mean? Peace, long-suffering, fruits of the Spirit. Meekness, kindness, all those things. But it's transformed to the transfigurationing of the world identity. I mean, I've never in my life seen anything that scares me or irks me on television except when you see, you see, see these fingernails just smooth like that and round or whatever and they got a lot of dust and probably need to be cleaned or whatever. See that? But 
now they got fingernails that are sharp that the people wear that are like razors or whatever. Those things stick like, I don't know, chicken feet or dog toenails or something. But those things are long. And when I see that, I wonder, what is this? It's a transformation, you see. So the culture, the people, everything is transforming. It's good to be back with you in that fastest 30 minutes. Now, let's look at life's teaching here in Luke chapter number 16. And in verse number one, and he said also unto his disciples, <coughs> excuse me, now this is coming right after the lost son, okay? There was a certain rich man. Now, this is really something that most people, you know, <laughs> I have to laugh because rich people, a lot of them don't know what being rich means. They have no idea what it means to be rich. When I was in Mississippi, and I would find the dewberry bush, that's some juicy, sweet blackberries, the old folks called dewberries. You touch one of them, you better be careful because they're soft and juicy. You got to pick them with delicacy. Make a long story short. At that time, I was rich. When I would find a plum tree, I was rich. A muscadine tree, I was rich. I think about it now in the joy, in the elation that flows through me in the memories. I relive it as if it was yes, did it. Look at what he's saying. People remember, in this case, your money, your house, all of it. You're rich, and they are rich. I heard about one in individual that was building a hundred million dollar facility of some sort. And I thought, wow, my God. They said the individual probably be worth about a billion before it's all over. I said, wow, my God. And that same individual would be a person just like me that came from the projects of Mississippi. And I watched them rise to the top in life. Ooh, brothers and sisters, teachings of the world. There's so much money in America. So much money. And he said also unto his disciples, we're in Luke 16 and 1, there was a certain rich man which had a steward, and the same was accused unto him that he had wasted his goods. Now you see it. Now, you and I know that if we work for rich people, we don't waste their stuff and squander their stuff. It's a blessing if you are working for rich people. But guess what? <coughs> Excuse me. Everybody's working for somebody that's, you know, more prominent than they are. Everybody is working for somebody eventually up at the top that is rich. All right? If he called him, Look at this now. Watch what life is saying. And he called him, and he said unto him, How is it that I hear this of thee? How is it that I hear that you're out wasting my potatoes and my carrots? <laughs> you know what I mean? My peas and my cornbread. <laughs> you won't even have way clean the house. Give an account. Do you see that? Give an account of thy stewardship. But God is saying, can you give account 
of the goodness of your work, of what you do? Is it profitable? Is it gainful? Is it beneficial? Give an account. What person want to hire somebody else to work for them? And then after the person finished working, they got to go behind the person to uh, clean up the tidbits of what the other person didn't do to complete the job. Nobody wants to do that. To hire somebody then have to go behind them and do the work. Well, there's a lot of people that does. You see. So what is he doing? He's saying, hey guys, I've heard about you. You see. And that's all there is to it. People know when you're lazy. And people know when you don't want to work. So they're watching you. And in today's time, there's just a lot of sham master jobs. They're just basically sham master jobs. In other words, that's a job to where people get paid for doing nothing. Uh, they have a title, and they may wear a hat, walk around with a pad or whatever. Y'all know what I'm talking about. All right? Give an account of thy stewardship, for thou mayest be no longer steward. Can you prove that everything is good to go? Otherwise, you're fired. You're going to lose your job. Then the steward said within himself, you see the process, evil thinks within, evil concocts, evil plans to hurt, seek, steal, kill, destroy. I understand some things. And God had to remind me again because everybody told me, everybody Every single person told me for about three months. They said, Prophet Johnson, everything is going to be fine. You're going to be all right. Nothing is going to happen. Inside, I had an uneasiness. I couldn't hear that. Everybody said that we've went through all of these things. We've done these things. Trust us with what we're saying. But inside, I tried to believe. And I did. But as I approached, I, I could feel the enemy. I knew something was wrong. I could feel him. And I was terrified. Because I knew that I had to meet Satan and his operative. And lo and behold, I met the child of Satan. And when it was all done, I told all of the people, I said, I told you that Satan's child would hurt me. And they did. You see, God had to say to me, son, it's you. And the enemy know it's you. I said to my father, am I not safe anywhere? I said, is there anyone that does, that, that does not hate me? Is there anyone that loves you and me besides uh, Sister Brunel and supporters of the ministry and leadership and all of it and minister those? I said, is there anyone human in life? And the Lord let me know. He said, you're Prophet Johnson. He said, that's why the enemy seeks to hurt you. And it hurt because I know none of these species, but because of Satan and Lucifer, they know me by the Spirit. And that's all I can tell y'all. Y'all don't see it, but when you have no one 
absolutely no one that you can tell or talk to that can feel your hurt and your pain and you are alone because of who you are? That is not God's will for us in life. So I said, finally, I'm on my own, really. I may not ever get help again, but I know now I am alone. Look at this. The steward said within himself, what shall I do? People don't think about that till they get rock bottom. You haven't been to rock bottom. I don't want to talk about rock bottom. I think I talked about it before. I've been there. <laughs> I know some others that have been there. Rock bottom is when you mess up so bad there's nothing left. You got to start over. And you say, now what am I going to do? It's when you don't have a direction. When a child graduates from high school, throw the cap and gown hat up in the air, and when the hat falls back down, the child don't even have a plan. Say, what am I going to do now? I lived it. I told it. You see. Well, there is no vision. The people perish. Everybody else talking about where they're going. They're going off to do this, going off to do that. Bragging and boasting. But yet, you got to go back to the projects of Mississippi to be hunted by the police. God, y'all. God help America. What shall I do for my lordship, for my, <coughs> for my lord, take it away from me, the stewardship? I cannot dig to beg. You see that? In other words, I got my pride. I know who I am. I can't go digging holes. And start begging. I am ashamed. What will I do? People will oftentimes get by, but in the end, they won't get away. When you can can do nothing, <coughs> when you, when you can do nothing. And there's nothing left to do. And they say, it's all out of my hand. I can't do. That's exactly what God wants you. Now all you got to do is keep your mouth shut. You see. He'll do the rest. It's one thing I learned. The apostle Paul said about Alexander the coppersmith. And every time I think about it or I read that scripture in King Agrippa, I fall out laughing, but I'm not going to do it now. He said, Alexander the coppersmith caused me much trouble. <laughs> I tried not to laugh. But his next words were, but he shall receive his reward. That's the only scripture in Bible that I've got in this whole world to hold on to as my greatest assurance that vengeance is mine, I am the Lord, I will repay. I understand all of that. I understand all. Give it over to the Lord in prayer. All of that. But when
it? He said that he shall receive his reward. God said to me the same thing. He said, many cause you much trouble, but they shall receive their reward. The only thing about it is that a lot of times you won't know, and sometimes you will know. Here it is. Uh, we're in Luke 16 and verse number 4 because it says, I am ashamed. What is the world going to do? Teachers of the world going to see a lot of people are not going to come up out of what they're in until they're shamed in it. A lot of people are not shamed in nothing at all. A lot of them are not even shamed about being shamed. I've had people, <laughs> and, they, and they told the truth. I don't care what nobody think about me. I don't care what they say. And the thing about it is that everyone knew what what they'd done, but it didn't bother them. See, some of us, we got shame. Uh, in case you don't have it, then you really need it. Even children got shame. Everybody about got shame, you know what I mean? And shame is a good thing when it is or happens in the right way. Because it teaches you and it learns you in life. I am so ashamed of my life. That's the reason why I tell it. Because one man said that if you got a, a fool and everybody knows that man is a fool. But that person that's the fool have got a whole lot of other fools following him. So who is the bigger fool? The fool or the fools that's following him? You see. When I heard that, I thought to myself, but those guys have no shame. You see. When you have shame, it breaks you to the reality of life. Shame will get you in a place to where it'll cover you up. It'll cover you up with other shame. So when you get around people doing the same thing, ain't nobody got no shame. None of us got no shame now because we're in the same game now, so we're doing the same things. But shame helps to get you going forward. And once you get there, your life changes. I've, I'm so ashamed, so embarrassed, so sick, so so humiliated it even to the point to where I never ever in my life as long as I live as a human being in the presence of your species of mankind do I ever want any of a certain species of your kind to ever see my face again as long as I live, because I am so ashamed to ever be in their presence again. And I never, ever want them to see my face again. And they look at me every day, right here, on Universal Truth and Living Strong. <laughs> Boy, am I not ashamed of what? Ain't I ashamed? 
couple of minutes, we're going to finish. I am resolved what to do. That when I am put out of the stewardship, they, re they may receive me into their houses. Look at that. Now you need somebody to take care of you. Because you done lost everything. My God. Brothers and sisters in Christ. It about don't get no better than this. You know why? <coughs> He's at rock bottom. I better make some friends. Do I have anybody I can turn to? There's no one. God help me. He said, son, who can you turn to? He said, your mama, your daddy, your sister, your brother, where can you go? I said, Lord, he said, there is no one. Isn't that a shame? Such a shame. My brothers and sisters in Christ, hey, this is Super Bowl week Sunday coming up. And guess what? I'm going for both teams, the 49ers and the Kansas City Chiefs. The, we, the reason why I want the Kansas City Chiefs to win, because I want to see Romeo and Juliet on top of the world. And the reason why I want the 49ers to win is because I want to see Brock Purdy and McCatherine make history. Either way it goes, the Super Bowl is a win-win for me. Folks, that's going to be my time. I'd like to thank you for yours. Will you repeat after me and say, Father, I am a sinner. Forgive me for my sin. I receive Jesus Christ into my life as my Lord and my Savior. And I thank you in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. I'll see you guys tomorrow night. Good to be back with you. Just beginning, taking it out on the light side. This is Teachings of the World. Lucy, glad to have you back. We love you. We'll see you guys tomorrow night. Bye.